Most of you probably know that my primary PvP battleships have a tank build and they also have a DPS build. Now the Macariel is definitely one big exception to that rule because on this ship I only have a DPS build, I don't use the Macariel as a tank PvP ship, mainly because this ship has significant capacitor problems. Now originally I thought to build this ship like the Belgorn, I wanted to have the same tank, but that did not work well. Basically, uh, because of that, I ended up using only this build. Now this build is uh, really nice, I really like the DPS fit on the Macariel. I used this ship like I used to use the Cinnabal couple, couple months ago. And honestly, so far I really like it. Now today I wanted to play around with the shield and armor tank on this ship because the Macariel can do both and both are pretty good in certain situations. This is the classic Macariel PvP build that I use, maximum possible DPS, with basically no tank. And honestly, flying this ship with this build is really fun. Now we have received a couple new nano cores. The Macariel has received a sleeper nano core that I personally don't use. I have the box, but I haven't opened it yet. It's really nice, uh, but I also like the Trailblazer nano core that I personally will probably not buy because I al already bought the Trailblazer core on the Stratius. So most likely we'll end up using the good old Dark Halo Nano Core. I have this core for a very long time and honestly I really like it. Now, uh, this is the shield tank that I did try out a couple times. I kind of like this setup, although with the shield tank you will have capacitor problems on most ships because the shield boosters are capacitor heavy. Currently it lasts 4 minutes and 45 seconds. Now the Macariel doesn't have a lot of capacitor, that's uh, something that is noticeable on this ship. Undocking. In order to compensate for the low capacitor you have to use capacitor batteries and Nosferatus. Now in my case, uh, if you have good engineering rigs you can technically make it capacitor stable. We'll have to uh, play around with that. Now the overall Defense is looking pretty good, 72, 75, 81 and 84% resistance. Keep in mind, this ship doesn't have any tank rigs, so uh, these are the resistances that you will see if your Macariel is built for DPS. The damage control is quite useful, the extra 5 seconds activation time can be a lifesaver. I know that on the Cinnabal it did save my ship a couple times in some very interesting situations and it can also be used at Docking armor or hold depends when you have to warp out. Basically it is a panic button that works really well. The sleep nano core can also serve as a secondary panic button but I personally don't use that on this ship. Now you can use a capacitor battery like I did mention before and the capacitor will be improved, improved a lot I would say. And also you can use dual shield boosters, but that will be a big impact on the capacitor. And with dual shield boosters, I would personally use dual Nosferatus with a capacitor battery. Although in most cases one shield booster should be enough, but again, dual shield boosters can also be pretty good with, the, with a good uh, rig integration setup. You know, if you really have a lot of risk, you can technically make the Macariel really tanky. It is something that I haven't really tried out yet. I did try out to make it tanky with uh, with rigs that were a little bit less expensive, but with the really expensive ones, you can make a pretty terrifying ship. And maybe I will do that, maybe not, depends on, depends on my wallet, to be honest. My wallet is a little bit thin looking at 12 billion ISK has to be at least 60 billion before I can uh, think about such a massive rig change for a ship. Okay, well, uh, let me quickly uh, do another quick setup here. Now my favorite setup is definitely with the triple hardeners. 
the damage control is also pretty useful. You can use a reactive shield hardener instead of the damage control, but I like to use the damage control on this ship for the passive for the passive boost. And I also like to use dual webs to slow down fast moving targets and a scrambler. So this is the build that I personally really like for the Macarial. Now this is the exact same build but armor tank on this ship. Now armor tank is a little bit different. The armor repairs have long cycle times and you will notice the capacitor is vastly improved now, 60 minutes and 56 seconds, which is pretty good for this ship. Now the cycle time is 10 seconds, 11 seconds almost, and it repairs 1508 armor every cycle, which isn't that good, uh, but with the good rig setup for armor you can make a really good Macarial armor tank, even for PvP. Undocking. Now, let's take a look at the uh, resistances. The overall hit points would appear to be a little bit lower. That's also one of the aspects of armor. Basically, shield boosters repair better, but they are very heavy on the capacitor, while armor repairs are really good in the long run, and a lot of players like to use armor tanks for PvP because of that exact reason. 80, 75, 71 and 65% resistance and with the damage control it should be it should be a little bit better. Let's take a look at the uh, armor. 64 643,000 hit points, which is okay. 93, 91, 90 and 88%. With a pretty good armor rig setup, you can definitely make the tank on this a lot better. And of course the capacitor as well. Basically the same thing can be applied for the shield Docking tank and accepted. for the armor tank. So far I'm pretty pretty happy with the with the capacitor time on this ship with the current build. Now you can use dual armor repairs and I personally like to use at least dual armor repairs on armor tanks. That's to compensate for the long cycle times. And of course, to compensate for the lower resistances, it worked really well on the Balagorn and it would work really well on this ship as well. The capacitor is still looking a little bit better than the, than the shield booster build and with the dual Nosferatus 9 minutes and 48 seconds, which honestly is actually uh, really, really good. Okay, now let me, uh, let me go and swap the adaptive into one capacitor battery, you can do that, but I would recommend to have a armor resistance rig if you already plan to use capacitor batteries to compensate for the lack of the third armor hardener and the capacitor is now 14 minutes and 52 seconds, but again with the current setup the overall hit points will take a massive hit. And of course, like I said before, that will be fixed with the tank armor setup on the Macaria, which honestly works well, should work well on paper. I really haven't tried that type of build out. When I say that type of build, it really has to be a specialized, specialized armor tank build. On this ship, I did try some combinations between tank and DPS. It really did not end uh, did not end well i wasn't really happy with the with the result but uh, if you are if you're enough creative you can definitely uh, make the build that i have imagined to work really well and i will actually do that when i have time okay well i think it will be time to uh, see how how this ship actually works with the shield tank and then with the with the armor tank now, the shield tank can be used against damage types that have pretty good base resistance on the shield. For example, that would be kinetic explosive. However, thermal and EM could technically be a problem. Basically, lasers melt shields, lasers Sometimes the railguns can do that as well, but lasers are basically the number one enemy of shields. 
Now for the armor tank, you can easily do armor missions because they will do mainly thermal and EM damage, which the armor has pretty high base resistance and you can make the you can make a very good combination between a DPS and tank build. With reactives and at least one or two adaptives, you can make your ship lasts pretty long, even in storyline missions. Now, for storyline missions, I wouldn't recommend that you go with a uh, weird build. I have seen so many weird builds lately, it's unbelievable. From armor tank rattlesnakes to... Not a shield tank Balagorn, but very similar to that. I forgot what ship it was. I'm glad that I forgot what ship it was, but it, it was really weird was a ship that has a bonus on armor, but the player did build it for for a shield, something like that. It really doesn't matter. I think it was an Abaddon, actually. A shield tank Abaddon. Yeah, I've actually seen that. Now, for most, for most of these missions, you don't really have to worry uh, about the... about the tank. However, if you plan to run storyline missions, I personally recommend really long range or a really heavily tanked ship. Now the Macarial is actually very interesting in that aspect because the Macarial actually has some pretty terrifying tracking. So for example if you have one Ortus that is going to engage your ship at 40-45 kilometers, you can easily kill that Ortus before it warps out. Sometimes Having the tracking computers fitted as defense is actually a pretty pretty good thing. I will also recommend that you pick a lot of webs if you already use the Macarial for storyline missions. That is excellent against Stratios battleships. I fly the Stratios, I know how how sneaky that thing is, and I know how how deadly it can be in a fleet. The perfect solution to a sneaky Stratios is to have a lot of webs, and you really have to be waiting for it. If a player is lurking around in local for a very long time, it most likely is someone who will tackle your ship. So triple webs and a scrambler should be enough to hold most ships at very close range. If you have a tracking computer or two tracking computers, then the tackle ship will most likely be killed very quickly. That's one of the ways how you can protect your ship against pirates. And again, I'm mostly speaking from my personal experience. I had some pretty nasty encounters with Macarios, and that's definitely one of the ships that I don't like to tackle with the Ortus. One of the ships that I personally don't like to tackle with the Stratius, I will still tackle them, but it will be very uncomfortable. And usually, uh, usually those ships have teeth, so you have to be careful if you if you tackle Macarius. Now, I don't really use tracking computers that often, because in most cases, webs and scrambles are enough to basically stop the targets, enough to uh, be able to hit them. I'm working on the on the cannon skills. Had some had some really rough time with the skills lately. I messed up uh, one of the one of the skills and I wasted like one million skill points, I think, by accident. Basically, uh, when I reset skills, I forgot to remove the skill from the from the menu, and all the skill points went to that one skill. And yeah, it happens. So. Uh, that's basically what is what is causing me, uh, what is preventing me from having really high DPS on this ship. Now, speaking about high DPS, I haven't bought the barrage implant yet. I will probably. I will definitely actually buy the, the implant. Just waiting for, just waiting a little bit longer because that implant will be nerfed. It, it just has to be nerfed, I mean, the the change that they made to the, to the implant in the last patch was a, was a positive change, but it wasn't really there yet. Basically what they did is they removed four of the bullets. Now it's uh, actually, it's not four, three. 
used to have 12 rapid fire charge bullets, now it has only 9. Which is still around 350,000 damage in like uh, 5 seconds, so yeah, that's still pretty broken if you ask me. So I believe that it will be, it will be changed on a, maybe on a weekly basis. Uh, they did say that they will balance that out uh, with every patch, so I definitely can see this implant getting big nerves. I do understand that uh, they are collecting data to see how much it affects the game, but I mean, they just have to look at the at the last like Macario video that I did, where I delete that Hyperion in like 11 seconds. I mean, that's I personally think that's like enough proof that it's pretty broken. I know it's expensive, but still, it's it's busted and. It can cost as much as it wants. If it's broken, it's broken. It has to be fixed. Even if I level it up to 45 right now, I would still want the skill nerfed, the implant nerfed. Because it's it's pretty busted. It's actually hilarious how how, how ridiculous it is. And I remember I think a couple months ago on one of the developer live streams. One developer actually said that their favorite ship is a Macario. Well, now it all makes sense. <laughs> now it all makes sense. Okay, uh, joke joke aside, I wasn't. I, I was just having fun for a for a moment. My apologies. So far, the the shield tank is is working quite well. Now you can see that I'm trying to save the capacitor as much as possible. So uh, I turn the afterburner on and off, depends on when I need the speed boost. On the, I think on the test server I made the Macarial go 1.4 or 1.5 kilometers per second with the afterburner. Basically for that you have to use the C type or better you can actually use the B type or A type afterburner. You have to have a pretty good nano core and not warp compromisers, but we have to have auxiliary thrusters. A battleship that goes 1.6 kilometers per second with a afterburner is actually pretty quick. So that's one of the advantages that you will have with the Macarial. The Macarial is pretty fast. The fastest, well not the fastest battleship definitely, because we have the Nestor that goes uh, 3000 meters per second, but the Nestor is a very odd ship, so I'm not really counting it, although I should because it's a faction battleship, but yeah, the Makara definitely one of the faster ships, with the afterburner, with the micro drive, the Makara can go around 2.5 kilometers per second with the good build, with good rigs and good nano core, but the Nestor will definitely be a little bit faster, but the Nestor will be slower with the afterburner, so if you like to use afterburners, the Macarial is the ship to choose. I also like to use auto cannons mostly. I have destroyed a lot of Macarials with large artillery, which works, but you have to be aligned, and it can be a problem if there is a sneaky Stratos lurking around. Basically, you have to use a lot of webs. Although, large artillery, even with quad webs, will not hit a ship orbiting at zero. I usually like to orbit at zero with the Stratius, so most of the artillery ships don't have enough tracking to actually hit me. That's the, that's the problem with the Sniper Macarial. Or perhaps, if you have a lot of stabs, then you can easily warp out. But if you have a lot of stabs, then you will not have enough DPS, you will not have enough locking speed. Basically, you have a lot of other downsides with using warp, warp optimizers and aura stabs. Well, definitely the PvP application with the artillery material is, is there. I mean, this ship can have like 50,000 alpha damage or something like that. Something ridiculous. Definitely can be used for PvP, but for PvE, 
Mm, I wouldn't use a artillery machari because I, w I wouldn't use it because uh, of the threat of uh, sneaky Stratos cruisers lurking around. And again, I'm mostly talking from my personal experience. I mean, you can just go back at some some of the previous videos in this in this week. And you will see uh, that I fly the Stratus quite quite often. It's one of my primary cruisers that I that I use for tackling, and so far it does the job really well. I had a pretty good fight with it today that you will see in a couple days. Oh man, it was. I'm not gonna spoil much, but it was really exciting. One of the best fights in a very long time. Now uh, here I'm using the. Armor tank material, and I can tell you immediately that the capacitor is in a in a better shape now. Even with the lower resistances, it should be enough to tank a classic tier 10 mission. Usually, these missions are not uh, that dangerous, but you never know. I like to adapt my build basically to every possible scenario so that if someone decides to use my build uh, that it works in low sec, in no sec and in high sec basically that's my goal I want something that can cover most areas without much of a downside the only downside would be the lower DPS in high sec for high sec I would personally like use quad driver stabilizers one adaptive and one shield booster basically and I would easily go through the missions without a problem. However in low sec you can't use that build because you will be destroyed very easily by other ships so that's why I like to adapt my builds to every possible scenario that I can think of and I think so far it works really well. And the build that I show you here it's, it's the basically the same build that I use the only difference would be uh, if I use B-type or A-types instead of C-types, but everything else is basically the same. The rigs are also uh, basically the same. If I do a major change on one of my ships, I usually like to record that. I think there is only one ship that I haven't showed you the, the build of because it's still work in progress. Now, I thought about trying out the Bargast for PvP, but uh, wait, I have destroyed like two of them in the last couple weeks, and I have a pretty bad feeling that if I start flying a Bargast that I will face the same fate as those ships that I've destroyed, which is a very funny feeling to be honest, you know, I, as they say karma will get me one day and I think the space pen is the ship that uh, I might actually lose next so so I'll try to you know not lose it but I don't know uh, these things are very easy to kill if if you're not careful enough. now the Nestor is definitely a little bit different perhaps I will fly Nestor very soon not really sure these things are expensive, so if I build one, I have to actually use it for a very long time. So I have to be careful with the with the choices that I make. But I have to admit, the Macario is also pretty fun, and I can't believe that this ship has been sitting there, basically in my in my old home base in the previous alliance that I was at it was practically sitting there deep in Nolsec being used for PvE yes the Macario's backstory this exact ship is the same ship that I used two years ago and back then it was only a PvE ship but now it's a PvP ship and honestly the backstory of this ship is a very interesting. I think I already told you uh, how 
how the ship was made and when it was made, one of the first tier 8, one of the first faction battleships that was made in the game. Can't believe that it was actually two years ago. At the time, I, I was actually flying, I think, the, the RB Core Tops. I was flying the Phantasm and the Cinnabal. It was a really very interesting, uh, very interesting period in this game. But now, uh, as things move on, I did decide to to use this ship for PvP. And let me tell you, I'm actually having more fun with this ship than with with the other battleships. Maybe the Balgorn is is was a little bit more fun in some aspects, but the Macariel currently, as it stands, is ridiculously fun. And I'm not talking about the implant. I don't use the implant. I really don't need the implant yet. Well probably buy it but but man I'm I'm enjoying this ship a lot and I have to also say this right now the first two space pan kills that I made were made on this ship I thought that the Balgorn will get them but I was wrong it was the Macariel so this ship also is uh, very lucky and one of the one of the things that I like about it. Well then, that was a pretty chill run with the Macariel. Honestly, both builds, both armor and shield tank, is looking pretty good. Depends which one you actually prefer, depends which which ones you have skills for. In my case, I think my shield skills are, are a little bit a little bit better. So in most cases I will use the Macariel with a well, not a shield tank, I can't call the the PvP build a shield tank because I have like uh, 3 or 4 gyro, gyro stabilizers. But I mostly have one adaptive and one da uh, one damage control. But perhaps I will try out the armor tank with the same idea, with a damage control and a adaptive armor harder. We will see what I'll do, there is definitely still a lot of room for improvement on the Macariel. So with that being said, hope that you enjoyed. So again, it was a very chill run with the Macariel. I enjoyed running the missions with this ship and I'm definitely looking forward for more PvP on this. The next Macariel PvP video will be very interesting as, uh, as you could probably, as you could probably guess by now. So with that being said, stay safe, fly safe, and as always, I'll see you next time.